good afternoon everyone and um, welcome to season two episode two of the multiphysics channel um, today i would be presenting to you um, a term that's heard very commonly like a digital twin uh, but a lot of people think this is just a buzzword and and the idea of my presentation today is to show you through some examples um, um, that this is more than just a buzzword um, before I start, a little bit about me. Um, so my name is Chantrima. Um, I'm a food process engineer uh, in the second year of my PhD at EMPA. Uh, my background would be um, at the moment making physics-driven digital twins of fruits, uh, but previously also flow visualizations for uh, optimizing baking ovens and also baking a lot of protein-rich bread. Um, I'm famous for my love for chocolate, and um, here is also true, two truths and one lie about me. Maybe at the end of this presentation, you're able to gauge which one is the lie. Um, before I delve into the topic directly, um, I want to take a moment to uh, describe what problem are we solving. Um, and here I um, want to tell you that we see a lot of perishable biological products around us. Um, and these often have to travel very long distances to reach us. Uh, but one critical element of this problem is that they must be maintained within a narrow range of temperature. Um, but this is often not possible in commercial cold chains or very difficult to control. Um, and as a result, we have a lot of losses in these supply chains. Um, and one key problem here is uh, for products like fresh fruits. Um, if, if we go too high on the temperature, we have uh, fast quality loss. If we go too low, we have chilling injury and so on. Um, so basically, this is the problem statement. And uh, now I explain how we use digital twins to solve this. Um, so what is the current practice in these supply chains? They typically gather a lot of data from continuous monitoring of temperatures and so on. But what really happens to all the sensor data? At the moment, it is largely underutilized um, or sort of reaches a dead end. And uh, this is the whole idea of a digital twin to utilize the sensor data to its fullest potential by bridging uh, physical and digital worlds. Um, so how is it done? Um, so all the sensor data we feed into a physics driven model, um, similar to the one I show here. Um, this creates a digital twin, which is uh, basically a virtual representation of a real fruit, uh, behaves the same way hygrothermally, -therm physiologically and so on. Um, and then this can provide us with some quantitative uh, metrics or KPIs, which we can uh, actually uh, work with. So we're directly translating commercially measured sensor data into uh, hardcore actionable metrics. Um, and the idea is that a digital twin is not just a simple physics-based model, but is also linked to the real product by sensor data. Um, to illustrate this better, I quickly take you to an application that we built in Comsol, um, where we illustrate these uh, key components of a digital twin. Um, so if this is good, uh, you can see this. So uh, on the column on the left, we have um, the input database, which is uh, calibrated for a physics-based model, so we can really choose the fruit and so on, um, play with the radius of the fruit or the peel thickness and so on. Um, the initial temperatures vary these parameters. Uh, play with the mesh, for example. Um, and, and one key input is that we can really link this with delivery air temperature. So at the moment I have constant, but I can also select a file with the variable profile. Uh, not just over two days, but longer. And then we also see this reflected in the humidity and so on. And then if I compute this, um, the idea is that we uh, get a digital twin like this, which uh, is able to capture all the 
radiance, all the uh, hydrothermal behavior of the fruit, exactly as it would in a shipment or a cargo, and then translate it into actionable metrics, for example, um, remaining quality or mortality, uh, mass loss or shelf life, and so on. Mm. Um, so the main components here would be the input database, the sensor data that goes in, the physics-driven twin, the metrics that evolve as a function of these quality uh, uh, of the fruit quality evolution, and and finally it can give us metrics like how long will the fruit stay good or how much chilling injury will it have and so on. Um, so coming back to my presentation. Um, why would we need such a digital twin if we already have a sensor next to a fruit? So the idea is that the sensor measures a lot, but the temperature uh, does not really uh, uh, indicate what we can do out of it. So it's more just a, a data set which uh, is not really of use to stakeholders. And then if we feed this into a physics-based model, um, then we sort of make a digital twin by linking sensor data with the model. And, and what would the outputs be then? Um, we get a lot of complementary insights, which are otherwise really not possible to measure in a, a, a real supply chain. Um, actionable metrics with which stakeholders can act. Um, we can identify trade-offs and so on. Um, and lastly, it, it gives stakeholders a lot to play with. Uh, imagine you're a retailer with hundreds of shipments and then you actually know which shipment uh, has uh, what shelf life. Uh, it can help retailers optimize logistics, uh, reduce food losses and so on. And this already brings me to the end of my presentation. But what uh, I really want you to take back with you is that uh, digital twin is so much more than a buzzword because it's actually uh, not all about colorful pictures of fruits, but more um, a virtual in silico replica of an actual fruit uh, that behaves the same way uh, mechanistically. Uh, and uh, and it, it's like having a fruit in front of you, but just on a computer. Um, it helps solve uh, it helps solve real world problems, not just in food supply chains, but also, for example, uh, with NASA, because they use this to bring back their satellite Apollo 12. Um, so they were the ones who really introduced this concept. Uh, and lastly, um, so I used the app builder from Comsol, which uh, really facilitates this uh, digital twin, uh, makes it very easy to interpret the inputs, the sensor data, uh, the behavior of the twin, and then finally the outputs. Um, and I hope I could give you a glimpse into the tremendous potential uh, that digital twins have, and that they're more than just uh, just another buzzword. Um, with this, I would like to invite you for uh, our next season. Uh, casting is open, so if you're into simulations or modeling or working with any of uh, the software is listed here or just curious about this, please free, free, uh, feel free to get in touch with Donato. Uh, his email ID is here. Um, also, we have another episode coming up in two weeks from now. This time it would be the boss talking. So if you're curious, uh, uh, you will get an invitation and please uh, do join. Um, yeah, with this, I'm open to questions and I thank you for your attention.